Hi there, and welcome to Exploring the Build. If you just found this place, then welcome. And if you're returning, I'm glad to have you back. I'm Alex, and this is my channel where we theory craft and create different character builds for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Today we are doing a quick build, which is a new series where we'll be exploring briefly summarized character builds for Dungeons and Dragons. There will be flavoring to go along with this, but essentially what we're looking for is just making a really big, beefy character who's able to take a lot of hits and punish enemies who do actually hit us. This is my first video in the Quick Build series, and if there are ever any character builds for Dungeons & Dragons that you want to see me take a crack at that would fit into one of these Quick Builds, let me know and I'll be happy to give it a go. The main concept for the build today is around the Retaliate mechanic. Retaliate, or sometimes called Thorns, is a mechanic that appears in a variety of different games, and the essential idea is that we want to be able to deal damage off of our turn, usually by just dealing automatic damage back to any enemy that hits us. Now usually those types of builds are very melee focused, so that means that we're going to have to build a very big frontline tanky character to be able to soak up a lot of hits to actually deal the retaliate damage back. By the end of this build though, we're gonna be able to have a very effective tank slash damage dealer character with an average of 243 health, effectively 40 temporary health at at least the beginning of combat, and we can deal an average of 27 damage on our turn and 15 damage to an enemy every time we get hit. That's not even from an attack. To start off, we're gonna jump right into character creation. So for the lineage from this build, we're going to want to pick something that gives us a fair number of good features, and that is going to be Tiefling. Now, Tiefling itself doesn't give us the exact features we want right away, but by taking the Tiefling-specific bloodlines from Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, we actually can pick up the features that we want right away. Namely, we're going to go with the bloodline of Levistus, or Levistus, I suppose, depending on how you pronounce it. What that bloodline gives us is that it switches out the Thaumaturgy Cantrip and Hellish Rebuke spell we would normally get from being a Tiefling, and instead we get Ray of Frost as our Cantrip and Armor of Agathes as our spell. We can actually cast Armor of Agathes as a second level spell this way, and of course we only do it once per day, and it doesn't count towards any spells known, so even if we have spell slots, we can't cast it with those yet. We're not going to worry about that too much right now, just know that the reason we're taking Tiefling for this is because we want Armor of Agathes, and Bloodline of Levistus allows us to do it. For the actual theme of this build as well, even though I'm not going to touch on it too much, I do like the idea of this Tiefling with the Armor of Agathes spell being essentially just a big frost demon, whether they are themselves a frost demon or they're descended from some sort of icy devil or demon from the plane of Levistus. For our ability scores, we're going to actually want to use the optional feature from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that lets us redistribute the ability score increases we'd get from our lineage to whatever we want. So that essentially means that we get a plus two to an ability score of our choice and a plus one to a different ability score. We're going to put the plus two into strength and the plus one into charisma. With that in mind, we should have the following array of ability scores. 17 strength, 14 Dexterity, 14 Constitution, 8 Intelligence, 8 Wisdom, and 13 Charisma. Since our background for this isn't too important, you can pretty much pick what you want, but really we're just going to jump right into the actual level breakdown of the build. Now we're going to summarize these levels, so really we're just looking at levels 1 to 4 right off the bat, and for those levels we're going to start off as a Barbarian. Even though I said we're building around the Armor of Agathe's spell, that spell can actually kind of work with Barbarian, and I'll talk about that why as well when I get to talk about the spell. But all you need to know is that for the first four levels, the only choices that matter are our subclass and our ability score improvement. For our subclass, we're going to pick Path of the Ancestral Guardian as our Barbarian Path. It gives us the Ancestral Protectors feature, which is a mini taunt-like feature that basically just de-incentivizes enemies from attacking our allies and makes them want to focus us. When we pair this with the Barbarian's base Reckless Attack feature, we are really going to be a juicy target for enemies to come and attack. And when we eventually have the Armor of Agathe's spell up, this will be what we really want to do, because then we'll actually get to trigger our Retaliate damage. At level 4, we're going to get to pick an Ability Score Increase or Feat. And we're going to pick a Feat. We're going to go with the Tiefling-specific Racial Feat, Infernal Constitution. 
Infernal Constitution is also a half feat. So that means we're going to get to bump our Constitution by 1, putting it now to 15. We also get a couple benefits like resistance to both poison and cold damage, as well as advantage on saving throws against being poisoned. So here, we're going to talk about why we're building with the Armor of Agathy's spell and why we picked what we did from levels 1 to 4. Our build actually came online at level 3 when we got the Tiefling Racial ability to cast Armor of Agathys, at least once per day, but at 2nd level. The reason we picked this spell is because when we cast it, we gain a number of temporary hit points equal to 5 times the spell level. In this case, since it's 2nd level, that's 10. Then, as long as we have those temporary hit points, every time we get hit by a melee attack, we automatically deal out 10 cold damage to the attacker. Even if we have one temporary hit point, we still hit back for 10 damage for free. No attack, nothing. The reason this works well with Barbarian is because this spell is not a concentration spell, which means that even if we rage, that spell will still be on us after we've raged. So if we cast it and then rage, we still gain the benefits. But here's the other catch. Because we're a Barbarian and we have resistance to piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning damage, as well as we're a Tiefling, so we have resistance to fire damage, if an enemy is attacking us with a weapon that deals any of those damage types, then we're actually going to apply the resistance first and then take away the temporary health, meaning that we effectively get double the amount of temporary health that the spell Armor of Agathys actually gives us. And the 10 cold damage that just gets dealt to an enemy wherever they hit us is going to stick around for a lot longer than most other classes would get if they were to cast this spell. So now that we know what our build is actually doing, we're going to go from level 6 to 10. And 6 to 10, we're doing another weird thing, which is we're actually going to jump over to Sorcerer. The reason I'm picking Sorcerer is because there's an Unearthed Arcana I want to pick up. And admittedly, if Unearthed Arcana is not your forte, not your thing, or you're just not allowed to use it at your table, then I would actually say go Warlock. The reason we're doing this is to pick up the Armor of Agathy's spell. We want to actually have the spell and the ability to cast it with spell slots, so we can do it more times, since odds are we're fighting more than once per session, and we're definitely raging more than once per session, I would hope, at least. Because of this, there's an one Unearthed Arcana that actually works really well for our build, and so I'm going to use that and assume that we're using that, but honestly, just getting access to the Armor of Agathy's spell is more than enough to make this build work. So right off the bat at Sorcerer 1, we're going to get to pick our bloodline. And the Unearthed Arcana bloodline that I'm going with is Giant Soul Sorcery. Giant Soul Sorcery allows us to pick a giant type to be descended from, and in our case, I'm going to go with Frost. Really, I would theme this more as us being descended from demons, like I sort of said about the theme earlier, but it's still fine if you wanted to be descended from giants instead. The idea, though, is that by picking Frost Giant to be descended from, we gain access to a couple of specific spells, one of which is Armor of Agathys. So now we have the spell to actually be able to cast with our spell slots, which we only have two of, but those are going to increase as we go over the levels in Sorcerer. We also have another feature from this subclass, which is why it's really nice and would be really awesome if you can use it in-game, and that feature is that we get plus one hit point immediately when we take this subclass, and an extra one hit point every time we level up with this subclass. Kind of like the same feature from the Draconic Bloodline that's in the Player's Handbook. Level 3 Sorcerer allows us to pick Meta Magic, and this isn't too important, but we still get the choice, so we're going to go over it. We're only worried about casting Armor of Agathys, so a lot of the options are kind of useless to us. However, Extended Spell and Transmute Spell are pretty good options. Transmute Spell, first of all, allows us to switch the cold damage that Armor of Agathys does and transmute that into something like fire, acid, poison, etc. That's really good for bypassing resistance. Extended Spell, however, allows us to double the duration of a spell, such as Armor of Agathys. Normally, Armor of Agathys lasts for one hour, this would make it two hours, and I think the ideal situation for this is if your party is going to bed to take a long rest, and you're out in the wilderness, you need to set a watch. The usual watch is about two hours, so if we take one, we could pop Armor of Agathys, extend the spell, and have the spell up for the entire watch period, and then just get it back, whether it's a spell slot or our lineage trait. 
There's actually another choice at level eight as well, or Sorcerer four, and that's another ability score improvement slash feat. Here we're gonna just improve our ability scores because we have strength, constitution, and charisma are all uneven, which means that we would really like to even some of these out at least, so that way we can get some numbers be, so that way we can get some scaling going. All we're gonna do here is improve both our strength and constitution by plus one. So we now have 18 strength, making our attacks relatively good, and our constitution to 16, giving us a little bit more health as well. Both of these are really nice to have, even if it took us to level eight to get them. Finally, from being a six level sorcerer, so finally at level 10, we now have third level spell slots, which is the highest level we're gonna be able to cast Armor of Agathys at. And we also gain another feature from the Sorcerer subclass, which is called Soul of Lost Astoria. This feature essentially says that because we're a frost giant, whenever we cast one of the spells that we got from being descended from frost giants, or really frost demons for our theme, we're gonna to get to gain temporary hit points equal to our constitution modifier. The catch is, however, that when we cast the Armor of Agathy spell, instead of gaining temporary hit points in replace of what we would normally gain, we actually add extra temporary hit points on. This means that we can actually get out an extra hit possibly, or at least have the hope of extending our temporary hit points from the spell for that much longer to get a little bit more retaliate damage out of it. After our little jaunt in Sorcerer, we're gonna go back to Barbarian for level 11, and then just stick with that for the rest of the build up to level 20. We're gonna end off as a Barbarian 14 and a Sorcerer 6. Any ability score improvements or feats are just gonna go right back to our ability scores, or at least giving us more health, to be honest. We're kind of okay calling our strength as capped at 18. You could move it to 20 if you want, but we're not too worried about that. Really what we want is more health to be able to give us one, more health in general, so we can stay up in the fight longer. And two, improving constitution is gonna also improve the number of temporary hit points we get from Armor of Agathys. At level 14 Barbarian as well, we're also gonna get the Adventurous Ancestors feature, which builds off our spirit shield, which I haven't talked about yet. Spirit Shield comes in at Barbarian 6, or in this case, level 12 for us. And that says that we can use our reaction to reduce damage that an ally of ours takes by 2d6. Kind of small for a level 12, for a feature that's coming in at level 12, but it's not too bad. And the real reason we like it is because what happens with Vengeful Ancestors. This is kind of our capstone ability, but it's still pretty good. What Vengeful Ancestors does is that when you reduce damage, that reduced damage is now 4d6, first of all, but the amount of damage you reduce, aka the f number you roll from the 4d6, is actually going to be extra retaliate damage that the enemy who attacked our ally takes. It's force damage, so it's gonna be pretty good for bypassing resistance, and it's really just an extra source of retaliate that doesn't hinge on us taking damage. So that's actually really nice to have as well. And beyond that, that's the build. So let's look at what we have. At this point, assuming that we've made it this far into the build, or at least that we've gotten to the spot where we had the third level spell slots, Armor of Agathys has kind of been maxed out. The rest of the levels of Barbarian were just to help the scaling, as well as give us a little bit more temporary HP and some extra damage from Vengeful Ancestors, but Armor of Agathys is really where we shine. With a modifier to our constitution of plus five, we effectively cast the Armor of Agathy spell as a level higher than what we're actually casting it at. So that means like if it's first, it's actually second. If it's second, it's actually third. If it's third, it's kind of fourth. The damage doesn't increase, but the health does, and that's what matters. Because if we were to say, cast the spell at third level, we gain 15 temporary hit points from the spell, plus five extra from the Soul of Lost Astoria, making it 20. Our resistance would effectively make that about 40. And every time we get hit while we have those 40 temporary hit points up, we're dealing 15 points of damage right back to the enemies. This is really cool and it's actually gonna be really helpful given that that's no investment on our part. We just have to get hit. The rest of the time, we're just a barbarian doing barbarian things and actually protecting our allies pretty well. But as soon as we actually get hit, we're gonna punish that enemy for having the audacity to try and walk up and attack us. We are a real menace on the battlefield, which is why I think the theme of a frost demon or a descendant of a frost demon fits so well. We're just big, tough, and really kind of mean. 
Other than that, that's the entire build. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. If there's anything you would do to change it to more closely fit the retaliate sort of theme. Thank you for joining me on the journey, and I hope to see you in the next one.